right, let's look at failsafe n with this additional data set that we're looking at. Going back, remember we're looking at a hedges g value. They are primarily negative hedges g values, meaning that uh, treatment has decreased whatever variable we're looking at for the mo most of the studies, not quite all. So let's go ahead and underneath analyses, let's look at publication bias. And it pops us to our funnel plot. Here we have the one with the observed values and the trim and fill already showing. But what we want to go to is fail safe n. Now here, the first thing we have is the classic fail safe n. We have a decent z value for the observed studies of negative 6. It is highly statistically significant, as you can see here. Um, and we have set our alpha at 0.05. It would take um, 109 studies with uh, effect sizes of 0 in order to bring us to down to a z value that was no longer statistically significant. So that's the classic failsafe n. Orwin did a variation on that, which allowed for us to look for uh, values that would be considered trivial rather than actually bringing something all the way down to zero. So let's play with Orwin's failsafe n for a minute. Now here we need to set either the criterion for a trivial hedges g or we need to set the mean hedges g in the studies that are missing. Let's go ahead and set the criterion. We'll assume the mean hedges g in the missing studies is zero. Some of them might be a little higher than that, some of them a little lower, but on average the missing studies have a hedges g value of zero and that's why they weren't published. Um, and the criterion for the trivial hedges g, let's start with, let's start with a negative, because we're looking at negative effect sizes, negative 0.1. Here we're saying that if, if that effect size drop from a negative 0.2 6 if we round down to a negative 0.1, that would be enough to make it um, trivial rather than an important effect size to be looking at. And that would only take 18 studies, which is not a lot. Let's say instead, ah, that's a bit harsh, let's go to a 0.05. So we'll put in 0.05 there, again a negative 0.05. And if we dropped our effect size all the way down, how many studies would it take to drop our effect size from a negative 0.25 all the way down to a negative 0.05? That would take 46 studies. I feel a little better about that than the few studies it would take to get us to a negative point, um, uh, oh, uh, 0.10. Now thinking about this, here we're looking at instead of looking at the z value and how statistically significant it is, instead we're looking at the actual effect size value, which is really what we're more interested in. Part of the reason we're doing meta-analysis is to get away from that um, over-reliance on things being statistically significant or not significant. By using Orwin's failsafe n, it sort of draws our attention back to the effect size, which is where we really want it to be. Um, in order to interpret this in a paper, I would talk about both of them. I'd go ahead and put in the classic failsafe n, um, that using that set of calculations would take 109 articles to bring the effect size down to one that was not statistically significant, is what that part is saying. And then I would talk about Orwin's failsafe n. Um, using Orwin's failsafe n in order to bring our criterion down to a trivial um, level and then go ahead and define what you would consider trivial, in this case negative 0.05, it would take 46 studies. And that's, you know, the number of studies you'd expect to be sitting in somebody's file drawer. Um, and it's probably, we probably don't have 46 studies sitting in somebody's file drawer, um, but it's possible. We'd like those numbers to be even higher, but even at 46 I'm feeling okay about it. So that's where we're at today.